If your favorite movie is School of Rock and you secretly wish you were in an 80s hair band, we got a story for you. We found a group of girls who spent the winter making music, who got their chance to be on stage and in the spotlight, but in the end, they got much more than that. In the basement of the Zootown Arts Community Center in Missoula, a journey is about to begin. Four girls meet for the first time on this February day to create something amazing. Music. This is Girls Rock Camp. It's kind of like a regular band, just, just girls. For the next six weeks, they'll form a band, learn to work an instrument, write a song, and then perform in public. There's nine-year-old Morgan, eight-year-old McKenna, Sophia, who's in the third grade, and Pearl. She's nine. She's the oldest. This camp empowers them, says music director Lucas Phelan. Girls are, are women and non-binary people are very underrepresented in music. So we want to encourage non-male people to express themselves and to be heard. You can't just have a life that's all about work. So like you have to um, fill your life with music and it'll be fun. It actually um, helps with stage fright if you have stage fright. Um, because it, it helps you get over it. Press your finger right there. 18 year old Erin Zalda Petri lends a hand in class. She is in a band herself and guides the girls through chords. Right here is where you should put your finger. But the thing is, the girls don't really need to know how to play anything because it's not about that. I think it does give them some confidence in being loud and, um, you know out there or whatever because I think a lot of times like for young girls they're like pushed back to be like quieter or like um, you know less like weird and like creative in that sense. First step, pick an instrument which is generally a process more fun than functional as Lucas and Aaron guide them with unending patience. So keep your hand pretty rounded. One, two, three, By the third week our players are in position. We have Morgan on slide guitar, McKenna will sing, Sophia's on bass, and Pearl is the drummer. Of course, now you have to name the band. Old Pop. Which took a little longer so the, than you think. The one that got the most votes. They settled on Flash Flood. Do we all like Flash Flood? <laughs> yeah. And this song they'll sing is about bullying. And then for the choruses, lots of energy. The weeks go by as the girls learn their role in this foursome. As the song starts to come together, still learning, still laughing, knowing there are no wrong answers when it comes to creativity. There's more practice to work on timing. Sing in your head like, be yourself. And then comes the day of the show. And I'm really excited for them to get the chance to perform in front of people, because that's such a rush for these kids to be at the top hat. <laughs> After a little glamour session. Hi, we're the Flash Flood. Max Morgan on the slide guitar. They take the stage in front of their fans, friends, and family. The culmination of six weeks. They're now on stage at Missoula's Top Hat Bar. It didn't need to be perfect. It never did. Just authentic. Be yourself. They sing, be yourself. And that's what they did. And in the end, that's what really rocks about this camp. Now don't worry, Zootown Arts also has a co-ed and a boys rock class. Each performance is recorded and available on iTunes. A physical disability often has the power to put everyday things out of reach, from walking to driving a car, but it doesn't mean you can't go fishing. We went aboard an innovative drift boat that's helping those with mobility limitations go with the flow. Strength. Yes. A summer afternoon on the Clark Fork River, and river guide Steve Smith is taking his friend, Eric Holland, out for a little fly fishing. I think they're fine if caddis are emerging. The fish are playing hard to get, but that's okay. Because just being out here is the best part. It's really kind of a mindfulness process, right? You have to be kind of present and in the moment to be able to cast. And so you can't be thinking about all the bad things that have happened to you while you're fly fishing. Eric would know something about that. 18 years ago, after serving as a U.S. Army Ranger, he was in a tractor accident that paralyzed him from the waist down. <laughs> Initially, of course, the injury is what I'd like to call a catastrophic life-changing injury. Like, 
it just fundamentally changes your life forever. Like nothing's ever gonna be the same and you're kind of wrapped up in your head with the disability piece of it rather than like, what can I do from here? It takes, it took me about 18 months to come to grips like, hey, I might not recover from this in the way that I think I can. But Eric persevered, becoming a Paralympian, a world-class shooter, and now as a therapist at the Kalispell Vet Center, uses his own experiences to counsel fellow veterans. But sometimes, even the strongest among us need a little help, which, thanks to this, is easier. A drift boat with a hinged transom or backflap that allows Eric to easily roll up and in. So for me, this is a really big deal. Like I can just roll into the back of the boat and off we go and there's no chance of someone dropping me. Like these things happen, right? It was Steve Smith of St. Ignatius who first learned about these boats. There aren't that many around, but when he saw one, he was immediately inspired. So he bought one. I've been rowing and guiding for a long time and uh, I had a, a friend about 10 years ago that ended up in a wheelchair and uh, moving him in out of, the bo out of the boat was a it was a challenge. So um, I, when I saw this design, I just thought that's the way to go and uh, be able to provide access to people that you know, haven't had it for a while because of their injuries. Eric tells me he loves fly fishing so much, no matter what, he would figure out a way to get on this boat. But with the transom, he's able to get on and off easily and without getting injured. In fact, the interior of the boat can be reconfigured to accommodate power chairs, manual chairs, or any kind of assisted technology. And that allows everyone to experience Montana on equal footing. Anyone who's on the water enough talk, sees the whole world as, as current and as a flow. And, uh, you know, it just, it keeps going and you have to deal with it. Whatever, I mean, it's just like running a rapid. You come around a bend and there's something there, there's a challenge. And you have to take everything you have and apply it to what's right in front of you. Steve's creating a nonprofit group called Hydro Logistics in hopes of buying more accessible drift boats. Because now that the floodgates are open, his hope is anybody who wants a day on the water won't be denied due to disability. You know, I'd really like to see eventually a community event where we bring a bunch of these boats together and float the Flathead River right outside of St. Ignatius. So I couldn't imagine not being able to fish or row, you know, t tomorrow if something happened to me. Steve is working with Camp Bullwill in Ennis, Montana, a camp that also bought one of those accessible drift boats. By the way, before we hit the rapids, Eric's chair was locked down securely to the bottom of the boat and everyone had on life jackets, so we were all very safe. We have links for more information on our website, kpax.com. Do you know what's in your dog? They might look like a golden retriever on the outside, but maybe they're more Australian Shepherd on the inside. Well, it's easier than ever for pet owners to find out what is under all that fur. And as we go on special assignments, I found out why that's sometimes something very important to know. At this Mission Valley Ranch, Border Collies rule. We've been breeding for 30-some uh, years and perfecting what we want in a dog. Joan and Lynn Mason sell their dogs to people around the country for search and rescue, agility competitions, working ranch dogs, or pets. But in this new world, it's not just about the dog. It's about their DNA. <laughs> this entire litter of Border Collies had their genetic tests that reveal, among other things, what they'll look like when they grow up, which is important to a potential buyer. We have one rough coated parent and one smooth coated. So the possibility is you can get both. So we DNA'd everybody. The females are all sorted out, so people have picked. You just put it between their cheek and you just turn. But potential buyers also ask that a pup's parents be genetically screened to either avoid or anticipate any genetic health issues in their puppies. The Masons are equipped for that because that information is valuable to them too. The DNA testing can help an owner feel assured that the animal that they're buying is healthy and it could give them information on whether or not the coat will stay curly or straight. But it also helps the Masons know which adult dogs they should breed together in order to ensure the health of their future litters. For example, border collies can develop a serious eye disorder. The Masons can breed a male and female with a safe genetic combination to prevent that time bomb in their puppies. Welcome to Embark.
And that's one of the benefits of testing companies like Embark that's developed genetic testing kits revealing a dog's breed, ancestry, health, and even relatives. Embark touts a research-grade DNA genotyping platform that looks at more than 175 genetic health conditions and traits. It's important when you're not quite sure what kind of dog you have and you want them to live a long and healthy life. Embark veterinary geneticist, Dr. Aaron Chu. Dogs have been bred to be a certain way. When you think of a German Shepherd, you have a very clear understanding of how that dog's going to act and also what health issues that dog is predisposed to. Now, you lose that power with mixed breed dogs, right? Just because a dog looks like a dog breed mix doesn't mean it necessarily is. Doesn't mean you can make inferences about how the dog's life is going to be as far as, you know, like genetic risks. She calls it precision medicine into genomics, a science that's exciting to veterinarians like Trevor Ferguson at Missoula's Blue Mountain Veterinary Hospital. He's in the business of keeping animals healthy and DNA testing can help. Really is starting to intertwine with what we're doing here as far as diagnosing diseases and, and what the owner can do as far as collecting samples and understanding some of these diseases and, and maybe even being able to diagnose some of the diseases before they even are clinical. But where the science is exciting, the AKC Canine Health Foundation cautions, it's just one piece of the puzzle. And I think that people are so excited about this and all of us in medicine and health and veterinary medicine are so excited about trying to get DNA to give us all of the answers for health testing and for disease that we forget that it is only one of the tools that's out there that should be used. And we've even heard horror stories of people actually euthanizing dogs over test results like that. The AKC Canine Health Foundation offers a lot of free online information to help dog owners understand what tests are appropriate for their dog breed that may not include DNA testing. It spent millions of dollars globally for research into canine health and it does urge pet owners to seek help and guidance when interpreting any genetic test results on their dog. As for the future, most agree. This is all just the beginning of a specific science that can give us the tools to help our dogs live longer, healthier lives. Just medication-wise, I think that the DNA aspect may be able to make new drugs available to us. You know, I think the sky's the limit on some of that stuff. Now, genetic testing, a less glamorous way to use it, is also used by property managers, either by requiring DNA results to confirm a dog's breed before renting an apartment, plus many do genetic testing on dog waste to identify a dog and its owner when they don't pick up after their animal, and then sometimes they can be issued a fine, a job I would not want. No. What's this cost for these tests, then? It, it kind of varies. Uh, the Embark is around a couple hundred dollars, but it's very comprehensive. If you don't need that much testing, it can be anywhere from like $30 to $40, depending on what lab you use, you can get some guidance on that. We put a link on our webpage to this story about resources where you can look that up.